Hello and welcome to another edition of X Feed. My name is The Schiller. We do this every single day, Monday through Friday. If this is your first time tuning in, we talk about the Web3 news that has uh, graced my timeline, if you will. Today, we're doing kind of a deep dive into Metaverse land. We're going to be looking specifically at costs. If you happen to have any friends that are here, if you hang out in any groups, feel free to share the stream with them. Whip it open out whatever it is and uh yeah watch and we'll have a good time all right that's uh that's it for the intro going into things yesterday we highlighted this and i want to re-highlight it because this is a part of clone x and takashi murakami is a huge artist and to think that takashi murakami went and did a special collaboration with one of the first major nft collections out there and this is one of the only ones that has five out of five traits that are a part of like the Murakami drip. Okay. Now think of that, right? Cause when we put in the perspective and the narrative changes, well, maybe the price changes as well. Artifact also coming out and showing off some of the project animus stuff as it shows kind of just another character within here. We'll see what comes of that. V friends in the news as well. V friends debuts first comic book. The battle for balance begins. Uh, J Scott Campbell with the exclusive art cover uh, limited to 555 copies and they're available to the gift goat. So for anybody that's been following V friends, gift goat's been getting different things throughout the years. And I guess they're getting another one here. I, I I'm like a little confused. Cause I didn't think the gift goat had 555 versions of them, but I guess it did. Uh, early days of that. One of the first ones, again, I have some of the cards. If you see up on the top here where, uh, I don't want to bring it down cause it's way too dusty, but the trading card game for V friends, those sealed boxes are going for like $400 on eBay right now, 400 friggin' dollars. How insane is that? And that's, that's, I think that's actually like more valuable than the NFT, but I got another thing here for you. So we never actually did this on stream, but does anybody know what I am holding? in my hand currently. Any guesses at all? I have no idea what these are going for on retail, but these are the gutter mellow shoes. Apparently Lamal or Lamello Ball went out and launched like another shoe that was basically exactly the same as this with just like a slightly different color variation. Uh, and we have no idea what's going on with gutter cats overall after the takeover. But man, is this the vintage? Is it rare? These are what they look like on the bottom, it says R-A, and the other one says R-E, and I think it spells rare. But if you guys want, I can try to pull that out a bit later. Um, or if you're wanting to trade for Surreal Scapes, if anybody's trying to dump Surreal Scapes fluffs, you want NFT merch of certain things that are potentially defunct, uh, let me know. All right. NFT merch, got to love it. All right, going back to here. Now, positive about Gary doing this. And then, of course, there's the guy who fuds every single day about Gary. Here's Gary paying his grifter friends for promoting V friends. This is why the government is terrified of blockchain right? Because you can tra you can verify things. You can see FaZe Banks ETH getting 25 ETH, Logan Paul getting 100 ETH. It's there. It's on chain. Everybody can make their own assumptions about everything, right? But it's it's absolutely insane thinking how all that stuff's just transparent. But then we have the notion of, okay, can there be anonymous wallets? The, uh, you know, the privacy coins, if you will. There was a huge attack on them lately. Is that something that comes back? I don't know. Important announcement. Mark your calendar, says Alcedia. The highly anticipated Alcedia beta launch will happen on April 25th. So if you don't know what this is, this is kind of a uh, art metaverse, if you will, where it's kind of like an experience, which is neat, right? Because people usually just make games for the fact of like playing or completing an exact objective. But at the same time, why do you listen to music to get in a vibe, mood, experience things? And this is kind of an experience. So cool to see that. Justin, TD Bank subsidiary releases commercial explaining the Bitcoin having and promotes spot Bitcoin ETFs after. Apparently on the TD Bank page as well, they're highlighting that. So uh, wasn't expecting the banks to get into it, but here we are. 
In early 2024, Bitcoin's price reached new all-time highs. But what's the cause? Well, Bitcoin's price is determined by demand and supply, just like a stock. If there's more demand from buyers than supply from sellers, the price goes up. But if the opposite is true, the price goes down. And recently, the new US spot Bitcoin ETFs have increased demand significantly, but there hasn't been a significant increase in supply. In fact, there's another event happening in April of 2024 that will reduce the supply of new Bitcoin entering the market. It's called Bitcoin halving. Bitcoin was designed so only 21 million coins can be created. But instead of flooding the market with all the coins at once, a supply of new coins is slowly released into the market every day. As the name suggests, having cuts the supply of new coins in half roughly every four years. This will continue until around May of 2140 when all 21 million Bitcoin will be on the open market. So how has the price of Bitcoin behaved after the previous halving events? Well, following each halving, prices climbed up significantly. Although history suggests that Bitcoin's price is ready for more new highs in 2024, it's not a guarantee. There are other factors that could greatly impact demand and supply, which ultimately determine Bitcoin's price. For more information about investing in Bitcoin with TD through ETFs, watch our video. And to open an account online with TD Direct Investing, click the link in the description. How absolutely insane is that? How absolutely insane is that? First, the banks tell you you can't make any transactions in crypto. Hold on, what's going on here? And now they're shilling the Bitcoin ETF. Wake me, truly! Uh, London mayoral candidate promises crypto revolution. I am trying to think of the amount of people that will suddenly start paying attention to elections and whatnot if people are out there and saying, hey, we're okay with crypto. I think it's a very small amount of people that are out there, but it's going to be a huge conversation. And so Brian Rose, known for his hard-hitting interviews on London Real, is taking on the British establishment and running for mayor. His platform, Financial Stability Through Decentralization, he pledges to give every London resident a thousand euro in London tokens if elected, aiming to create a $1 billion liquidity pool funded by banks. Now, the question that we kind of have to ask with this and something I noted yesterday was a friend of mine on Facebook posted that I guess Canada is looking at a CBDC. And the first reaction everybody has is, this is awful. Oh my God, we're going to get spied on. We're not going to be able to use our money for certain things, which we're already seeing is the case, right? Like that's that's not necessarily anything new. But the notion of, okay, well, what if it's just, you know, I mean, there's a large amount of people that would never want to do this decentralized aspect. They already do this digital money anyway. What if it's now just an opportunity where, you know, it's saying, hey, Canada's like open to this digital realm and it's done in like a good way where, you know, Hey, you can have your Canadian digital dollar that's a part of the banks and other thing, but also have your, uh, you know, uh, typical however you kind of do it right now. You know what I mean? And that part intrigues me. So seeing this and other, you know, not that in Canada's sake, it's a specific mayor. It's like the entire country, but the political powers to be across the board shall be very interesting. Azuki, enter the garden. We finally have the trailer for Azuki. The only critical thing I've really had for Azuki is they've had all this talk. We've had like a little bit of like trailers for these episodes. It's been like two years. Where's the anime they're talking about? And it's here. Okay, I saw a couple people online that were going bonkers over it. I don't really know what to expect. It's a trailer. Did it get me like insanely hyped? Eh, not necessarily, but I, you know, I think that it'll be very cool and excited to see what it looks like. Will I watch it? Absolutely. And apparently the anime account that has 1.9 million followers... 
which my face is continually in the way with that, uh, tweeted out uh, about the anthology premiering on April 30th. So that's cool that it's getting a little bit more uh, mainstream recognition, if you will. If you remember when Ready Player One had that happen, there was a lot of people that were like, this is, this is stupid. This is on blockchain. What the frick? I don't know if people are saying that about that, but we'll see. Now, another thing people are saying, at least in uh, Peter Schiff's case, is saying that Michael Saylor is a fool. Bitcoin is El Garbiage. For fools. This, this is a, a, a blockchain letter, you know, like a chain letter, only with a blockchain. It's a digital Ponzi or a pyramid. Do I think Michael Saylor is <sighs> foolish? I don't know, you know, why Michael Saylor uh, does what he does. I mean, obviously... He levered up his balance sheet to buy a bunch of Bitcoin. He'd been selling his own shares in MicroStrategy stock, which obviously went way, they did go way up uh, because of uh, this, th this position that he's taken. I mean, ultimately, I think MicroStrategy goes bankrupt. I mean, I think that's how— You think so? Yeah, I think eventually the Bitcoin is going to crash and the creditors are going to end up with the company. I mean, that's what I think is going to happen at the end of the day. BlackRock, they're fools. Very interesting. We have people that are still so much on both sides of the fence and mainstream adoption. Peter Schiff saying go buy gold and Bitcoin is El Garbiage. But again, apparently metals are doing well. But what did better before that Bitcoin? How's it happening going to happen? How's it going to work? Market's taking a little bit of a dump right now. Whole timeline's talking about it. We'll see. In preparation for the Mutant Hound Inscriptions launch, we are allocating a fixed amount of the NFTs specifically. So 8,500 are going to be registered to the Mint and a reserve of 1,000 will be gifted to the community to empower our builders, allies, and various product lines. In the absence of royalties, a reserve of 500 Mutant Hounds will be allocated to Novell Labs. Again, rather large supply where typically lately we've seen collections without the uh, 10,000 unless it's something that's bigger like that Prism sale uh, trying to scale. But for like an individual PFP type aspect, interesting, they're keeping the 10,000 mark. New Era dropped their Big League Chew flavor. I, I don't know what I think about these hats. The Yankees one looks kind of weird. Padres, eh. Atlanta Braves looks really good. Uh, Colorado Rockies, eh, okay. San Francisco, eh, but the Phillies, eh, okay. You know, respectable, probably would buy. Uh, what the hell is going on with this? Uh, if you haven't seen, the largest women's Fortnite event in history has been announced this week with $250,000 on the line, and they call it the Milk Cup. And when I saw this, I'm like, okay, that's weird. What an odd, strange name for this. And then I was like, man, it's weird because it's almost like a meme, and then you think of crypto and like meme coins are really successful. And now people are talking about this and they probably talk about it less if it wasn't called the milk cup. And you're like, man, is, is the world just a meme? Is that what we're supposed to laugh at everything and think, oh, yeah, it's the best thing ever? What the hell's going on? Countdown continues for cryptoids. Two days remaining till the masters of the universe. Wave one cryptoids are vaulted. This is amazing. And it kind of made me think for the first time in a hot minute how impactful this blockchain stuff can be. Because when we make the argument about cards and we say, oh, we don't know how much the supplier is going to supply. And so whenever there's a run of a product that stops, people go out and they buy in bulk those to resell at a higher price, assuming those go up in value, which, you know, 50-50, if they do, and sometimes it goes up by a lot, or at least it holds its value. But now in the blockchain space, we verifiably have, okay, they cannot make another edition of this without it being obscured. And so, for example, within Magic the Gathering, there's been like rare cards or they've decided to do reprints of things. Sure, it's not the original one, but it does massively dilute the supply and mess with it. And here, it's cool that we have that transparency. So very interested to see how the Masters of the Universe cryptoids kind of perform as that specific, specific initial vault of uh, collectibles goes off to the wayside, and it's only what's available on secondary markets. Nifty Wop. Most of you don't have conviction levels to hold a volatile asset for a year, let alone an hour, but some of you, the rare few, will have it in you. This isn't about being early. This isn't about luck. This is about conviction and destiny. Do you have what it takes to fulfill your destiny? Most of you don't. Most of you will sell yourself short, but the ones who do, they are the legends 
the chosen ones. Conviction is not learned. Conviction is an instinct, and you must never ignore your instincts. For many people have fallen victim to the same fate of ignoring their lifelong destiny, a cardinal sin. But a select few follow the line and lonely road long and lonely road of conviction, join an army, believe in something, or die a martyr. I don't know what the hell that word means. Cheers to the future. I don't know what the hell any of that means. I guess some about conviction were, listen, wag me, and that's probably copy pasta. BNB, one of the best alts last cycle, went from sub a dollar to $22, then all the way back down to sub $10 before climbing to 6 hundred dollars last cycle keep that in mind when you're looking at this dip wondering if your alt can keep going from this recent climb they can and uh will literally do 30 x's from here okay alex becker this is one of the weirdest things that i've seen in a minute why is it weird I don't know, just because I'm judgmental, but Mio here from CyberKong is saying we've been working on the lore of CyberKongs for almost three years. Uh, Nia Kia has always been a place inspired by some of the stories and experiences that impacted my life. Creating impactful stories is not always the easiest, but what has transpired has been pretty special. What you create eventually takes you on a journey of its own. Kongs have always had a unique culture, so it was only fitting to give them their own way of communicating. Soon that language will take you to a new adventure. So Cyber Kong's made a, I uh, I guess like a language where you have like your the own writing to like A B C D. I know that apparently for like Game of Thrones they had the Dothraki where it was like actually a language that was created and it sounded much more authentic. Authentic. I mean, this is kind of cool, but like, I, how many people are going to take the time to learn what that means? Go to decipher everything. Maybe there's some cool components of that that they have in the future. But uh, that's interesting that they wanted to focus on that aspect. Someone just dumped 83 mutants for six hundred and eleven thousand dollars. Guys, what's going on? Why are people just messing around and dumping six hundred and eleven thousand dollars? Holy jeez! Now holding two point five million. In their blur pool, what will they sweep? Imagine you're sitting on 2.5 milli. What are you buying? Yo, new type. What's going on? How are you? And Hypnotoad, I feel like I didn't say hi. The wag me was for you before, by the way, but hello, hello. Uh, the Alex Becker tweet I disagree with because BNB also burned massively their token when no one saw it coming. See, that's that's the things you don't know about. The left field, uh, yeah, you know, you're driving down a road and it says like hidden road ahead and then you take that hidden road and then it leads you to a pot of gold, but you tell everybody that it was some other story and it wasn't as simple. That's, that's crazy. But that's a good breakdown. I don't I don't honestly remember anything about BNB in the previous cycle, so that is... I mean, I think we're just trying to put hopium on the timeline, you know what I mean? I felt that Wagme was uh, for me deep in my soul. Hell yeah. Okay. Random point here about the world, eating out, et cetera, et cetera. Ever you're eating out, and you're like, all right, we have like a wait, waiter, waitress for uh, what? Like 15 different tables. Sometimes you don't get your water refilled. Sometimes it's just kind of, eh, right? And this TikToker decided they were going to write down their order to give it to the waiter to make it easier. And at what point do we just kind of have like the self checkout at like half of these restaurants? I, listen, I love going to the buffet. You have the water cans or drinks set up. You just go whenever you want. I'm I'm cool with that. You know, we go out to eat the good food. I feel like the restaurant industry is ready for a little bit of a shakeup. I I think you know maybe blockchain won't play a huge part in that, but still. It's weird that we haven't seen much of a change for restaurants apart from fast food places having those like self checkouts. There's not been a whole lot else that's changed. Maybe we're in for a change this year. Candy Digital. I highlighted this the other day just because the uh, MLB uh, pin that was available, but they actually reached out to me. And on Monday, we're going to be doing uh, a free pack giveaway that's going to be on Twitter. So if you're not following me, be sure to do that at Schillerverse and uh, you might be able to win some free MLB 
packs, which is dope. X feed soon. Can you help me find all the metaverse land? Guys, you're great. BYO pills. We got Ethereum towers, play Ember Sword, and we got a whole bunch of threads ready to go through each of those. So BYO pills, this was one of the first, and, and what we're going to do right now, just so you guys know, and if you're wanting to share the stream with anybody is go over metaverse land specifically. So if you, your guild, whatever, are going through that, uh, feel free to send this to anybody within your chats. So BYO pills, again, consumables of the metaverse. This was something that was kind of pitched as, hey, you can, you know, uh, consume one of these pills and then your experience is going to be like super trippy or crazy within uh, the metaverse experience. And obviously it took like a while for these things to come to fruition, but BYO pills really kind of expanded beyond just these initial pills to create... Um, uh, like a whole bunch of different collections from uh, Apostles, which were like the Avatar collections, to the pills, to the lands, et cetera, et cetera. And these are what the lands look like. Uh, it had about 6,000 Ethereum total volume when they first came out. Uh, right now, they're sitting at 0.018, which is like $62. So again, uh, basically, my my objective, or maybe not objective, but uh, attempt at highlighting here is that Metaverse land across the board is virtually dead, like is, like beyond zero interest across the entire board currently for various reasons, which we're going to get into. But BYO right there at 62. Uh, Ethereum Towers, this is my first time hearing about this, so it looks pretty kind of like high quality, fidelity, whatever. Ethereum Towers is a flagship project of the Ethereum world's metaverse serving as the first virtual destination and central hub of robust digital ecosystems. Have any of you guys heard about any of this? Oh yeah, doesn't Crypto.com uh, have a metaverse land for their Loaded Lions collection? I've never heard of that, but <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they did. For Ethereum Towers, it looks like the floor price, I mean, they had 908 ETH total volume, so it's like way less than what we looked at for BYO pills, but they're going for about $135 right now. Uh, don't forget about Hey House Akiba Pocket Dimensions. Do I just do House H OK? I mean, the Gen X is. I mean, the Gen X. <sighs> For anybody that's like newer in the space that doesn't know about Gen Xs, this is who. <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, do I just type in Pocket Dimension? Is that Pocket Dimensions Earth? Ooh. We might have gotten it. Yeah, so this one went for like 51 ETH. House Akiba basically sold like a Genesis pass for 500 bucks. And they were planning on doing a whole bunch of different things within the metaverse spaces. Like early days, it looked sweet. Gutter Cat Gang was going to do things for that. Apparently Gutter Cat Gang didn't pay for it. House Akiba, main guy Kiba ended up leaving a whole bunch of things. And it just kind of ended up going nowhere. All right, I'm getting ahead of myself though. Oh my goodness, we almost leaked. Uh, Ember Sword. So... Anybody remember these? Is it going to be something that comes back? Because I think the marketplace is tough for those. 2,000 plus ETH volume traded. Right now, the floor price for them uh, on OpenSea at least is $76. A lot of hype was around this collection. It feels that the majority of Web3 and everything to do with the blockchain has just taken a while to build. And so does that mean these aren't going to be successful? Does that mean the teams behind them aren't going to be successful? I don't think that you know, coincides and makes sense because we've seen this across the board. Everybody's taken much, much longer than we thought. Um, but $60 here, if you're trying to go through a token trove or IMX, it might be a little bit cheaper from the gas. All right, Traverse Plots. This one's been holding up pretty good. If you know Loopify, this has been a collection that is gotten a lot of hype, to be honest. A lot of people think that it's going to be quite successful and the plot's holding up so comparatively to a lot of these others right now at $1,000 or 0 0.32 Ethereum. Over on other deeds, these were trading for six to seven ETH on release. People were paying thousands of dollars in gas, but the game people didn't think was fun, but it's still, you know, $625 for a slice of land, which we highlighted Legends of Mara yesterday, where you can use within that and we'll see what else is available fluff world burrows these got absolutely crushed because they got free or sorry it was known that these were four additional lands and for the third kingdom those lands dropped and they actually went up relatively 
largely <laughs> in value for some of the rarer lands, but these were at about 0.2. They've come down massively. You can get like the rarest ones here on offers. People are accepting below an ETH that before were going upwards of three to four ETH. Very interested to see how the third kingdom plays out. But, you know, another kind of look at a metaverse that hasn't really been getting a huge bid as of right now. So let's go over to Guild of Guardians, where we have the different guilds. Uh, $453 for the Adventurers Guild, which was... These were sanctioned in like a way where it was... You could have like 10 to 100 members or something, and then it opens up to 500 members and then 1,000 or something crazy. And this was like a big, big sale at the time because these top ones were going for, I think, $90,000 plus. And this was like two and a half years ago before anything was even ready, right? So pretty insane what's been going on there. Only a few listed. So what does that mean? People can get into it. I don't know. And Arcade Land, which we've seen a lot lately, highlighting different collections that are eligible for the airdrop. Some of these rare ones were going for well over an ETH before, but right now you can buy a plot of land for Arcade at $52. Now, update on Surreal Escape lands overall for the Shroom Field. They're currently going for 52,000 root, which is pretty nuts, or about $3,500 US. The Cataclysms, which these were dropped to Cool Cat holders for free. If you were in the top 2,500 of the cool score, basically they've gotten a drop of about a thousand bucks. This is down a little bit because root from the sense drop and just the whole macro environment right now is down a few percents on the day. Apocalypse going for 10,000 root or 671. These were again were dropped for dead fellas. These people don't even realize there's like literally free, free crypto in their wallets. It's insane. The four by four is 28,000 root. Eight 1979, uh, 3x3 is way down below that at 13420-ish, roughly, again, about 900 bucks, and then 2x2 is two just, it, it gets really, really different down uh, at the bottom comparatively to some of the rares. I'm still not sold yet for metaverse land sales. Is there a guarantee passive income if you own real estate in the metaverse? What is the speculation about, uh, behind holding metaverse land in your opinion? So I think that we are, you know, it's a really good question. And the assumption initially was that these would have some kind of yield or something that would be very worthwhile. And most of them do. But the problem is it takes so long to have those use cases actually implemented because teams sell early, right? Like it's not something where we see, hey, the game's ready and we're going to sell the NFT. Like, I don't think that has ever happened. If we can find it, let me know. But I think every single sale we've ever seen has been, hey, we're building the product. And so what happens is that the speculation goes pretty insane. If, you know, we look at some of the different sales that were out there, a lot of the problems were with ETH from, you know, the gas wars and people were spending a lot to just what the market value was in a very uh, unsaturated environment. People were all kind of clustered into certain funnels looking at, hey, this is, you know, for like the other side sale, this is like the only metaverse land that we can buy right now that has attention. Everybody's talking about it like this. There is no way this can fail. And that's the narratives, the conception at the time. And then it's like, oh, hold on. We have to wait like a year for things to build out. And, you know, the expectations versus reality are, are, are super, super different. And that's a huge problem. Hytopia NFT world is doing pretty well with staking. I get a nice stipend from staking my land. That's awesome. Yeah, Hytopia has done an amazing job. And we interviewed the founder, uh, ArcDev, like two-ish years ago. And it was <laughs> it was a really good combo, but they, they've had a pivot and they've done a very, very good job of such. Now, switching over to meme coins for a second. If you've been on Solana, you know that it's been, <laughs> it's been interesting. But Phantom saying, we have good news. Phantom's transaction success rates have significantly improved. For the past 24 hours, our metrics show that transactions have been landing nearly 90% of the time, almost a 5x improvement from a week ago. So, uh, damn. Are you saying that, like, nothing was working? Like, less than... <laughs> Now that was working 50% of the time. Uh, Phantom should be much more reliable now. If you're still having issues, retrying should be a quick fix. So that's good news for that. If you've never seen uh, My Pet Hooligans gameplay, this is just like a quick clip I saw on my timeline from somebody uh, playing. It's really dark. Like, shockingly dark. I don't know if it's it's the person setting, but uh, the mechanics of the game and everything looked pretty good, and we saw the other day as well that they highlighted a huge amount of advisors, ambassadors that were part of that, so excited to see 
Uh, what what comes to my pet hooligan? Uh, Suravali said earlier in the season the Coyotes, as in Arizona Coyotes or Phoenix Coyotes, I think it's Arizona, uh, weren't paying their hotel bills and hotels around the league banded together and demanded the Coyotes paid for their hotel stays up front with a certified check. Very interesting. An NHL team is not paying their bills. Hmm, that's strange. Is no one else doing these? I have no idea where to even check out other creators of the Cool Cats 10-inch figures. Yeah, I don't know. I just These keep popping up in my timeline. Again, they're doing like a competition right now. If you happen to have any of the uh, Cool Cats Color Me figurines, thought this one was kind of cool, so just wanted to highlight that right quick. But yeah, if uh, if you're in the Cool Cat community, somebody's got to like make a, a banger thread of all these. You'd get hella engagement. There's your there's your free idea of the day. Going back to the Prisms Mint that happened yesterday with Futureverse and the Root Network, uh, Kona Road made like a, a chart of all the different statistics, which was really, really good. And what I wanted to try to highlight was the fact that, okay, we have about 5,000 people within the Root Network ecosystem at least participating in the NFT side, okay? So for the Quest participants, 4,946, and then new wallets, 352, which feels incredibly low. And I think, you know, there's a few different ways to look at this, but when I go back to Top Shot, because that's that's what I know, right? Like I've kind of just been going through the space with my perspective of I remember seeing Top Shot early, being like, hey, like this is cool. Wow, this is getting traction all of a sudden. And now we get to go back and look at those stats. Might not happen exactly the same way, but if you look at September 2022 and over on the side here for active users, it's about a thousand. Okay. And then and at the same time, that's about for a thousand users, it's about five hundred thousand dollars in sales volume, right? Like that's, that's, that's a lot for a thousand people. And then it bumps up to about three, that well, 2,500 we'll say. And then it suddenly goes up to 2 million, right? So you double the users and it more than double the people spending on the marketplace. And then it jumps again and again, and it goes from uh, the 2,300 down a little bit. And the pricing got cut in half too. With that of how much was spent, it went up a little again at 2,500 and then jumped to 30 4,000 active owners. So from a couple thousand to 34,000 in a month. And we saw the jump from a million, uh, or sorry, 1.6 mil uh, average sales volume to 43 million. That's, you know, listen, that's like a 35 plus X there in less than a month. And then it jumped to 226,000. And then it was 127,000 uh, active owners compared to that 34. So again, the jump is massive. It happens overnight. And that's why I'm like, damn, some of these ecosystems like parallel have that parabolic growth overnight. And I'm, you know, I, I think the roots can experience that sometime soon. Also, for some transparency coming over from the Ronin Network and Pixel side of thing, in the last two months, we've managed to lock 7.99 million of the Pixel token rewards from bots and cheaters. So they were able to lock rewards from people that were trying to game the system. Now, I don't totally understand everything about Pixel, but that feels interesting. They're able to have that much of a say or change things don't i mean we always joke about like the decentralized aspect right but if there's specific things to prevent people from cheating is that a good thing or a bad thing i th i think pretty good you know what i mean like like by my over here with my opinion i think that's pretty good even though some people will say oh you know it should be decentralized and whatever happens uh but some of the stuff we're doing here is working changes to vip pooling coming next week should help significantly too says luke Ben, I don't know if any of you guys are rocking within the Pixels ecosystem, but very interesting to see. So this graph is a little bit of a meme, no pun intended, but it says meme coins outperformed every other sector by 10x in Q1. Now, all the comments basically say, oh, what stats are you using for this? This seems extremely one-sided, and I guess they picked like the top 10 best performing altcoins to look at. And let's just assume that they kept that kind of notion towards everything because it's real world assets, AI, DeFi, taking the top 10 of all of them, right? If that's what this chart actually is, every top 10 coin averaged out whatever, Wow. Meme coins have had an insane Q1. Justin, Hong Kong set to approve spot Bitcoin and Ethereum ETFs by Monday. Well, yesterday we got the notion that they were trying to 
uh, have the Bitcoin ETF. I didn't know the Ethereum ETF was coming into that. Is this going to spark a move that's going to highlight alts at all? If ETH runs, do the other side alts besides ETH also go? What what are we expecting? Ah, okay. But we every day, every day, we expect a little bit of FUD. More than 25,000 of Yuga Labs royalties have been distributed to a defunct FTX US deposit in the past two months. $250,000 of royalties, which first of all is kind of why people are like, hey, this is why we need royalties because if it was connected to FTX, this is before they had the uh, royalty enforced marketplaces. So this is based off whatever they can get from, you know, OpenSea, Blur, whatever people put, but $250,000 for the past several months. Wow, two months. So, I mean, that's a lot. I wonder what happens with that too. But damn, there's a lot of crypto potentially sitting in dormant wallets. I've seen a lot of people out there that say, we're the best, we're doing the first, we're the only. So what do you think? The Forgotten Runes 3D avatars. Do you think that these are the best 3D avatars in the entirety of Web3? I think they're all right. Anything? Yeah, I don't like them. Successful IP usually starts with a book, movie, and then games. Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, Harry Potter. But you have instances where game was before TV and movies. Dune, The Witcher, Assassin's Creed, Mortal Kombat. With Perils TCG, we have games and comics first. So as we see here, this is what the parallel comic is going to look like, or is, <laughs> if you will. I've seen a lot of collections going out and doing comic books, but again, it doesn't matter what they're doing. It's about the IP that's being built and the care that people have about that ecosystem or what the story, their you know, investments from both time in capital. People into it. Does the story get broader? Do you find more people that share the same passion as you? Uh, that person thinks the movie Done came first. Uh, 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 apparently... Apparently, Buffalo Space. I've never seen it, so I suck. This is another thing here for the uh, the Futureverse crowd, but also for basketball fans in general. She's the greatest athlete to ever come out of LSU, says Shaquille O'Neal on Angel Reese, which if you've been watching the NCAA tournaments, obviously she was a huge factor within that and always in the media for one reason or another. So this person quote retweets it and says, well, here's all the people that were better that came out of Justin or, or saying or that you're saying Angel is better than that have come out of LSU, Justin Jefferson, Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, uh, Odell Beckham Jr., Tyron Matthew, Leonard Fournette, Patrick Peterson, Jamal Adams, Jarvis Landry, bada, 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 bada. But for the Futureverse crowd, Angel Reese is with Reebok, and so is Shaq. So Shaq is bigging up Reebok, bringing the ecosystem up, and when Angel Reese is wearing the Reebok Impact, what are you going to say? Hell yeah, Shaq! And he's going to be wearing it too. It's going to be great. Now, final thing here on Parallel on the show, I suppose, is Bonds, which we've seen in Featureverse a lot more coming out regarding guilds in terms of people... I'm getting DMs all the time. Chill getting my guild, bro! And I'm like, okay, we don't even know what we're doing! But anyway, bonds are a guild system that enable gasless and permission sharing of digital assets of games in the Echelon ecosystem. And again, this is for Parallel. In the coming weeks, Parallel players and admins from five bonds begin testing the alpha release. So these things are coming out. They're built specifically for this. We have like a whole new genre, blockchain gaming. Everybody's going to do great. It's going to be amazing, right? Really? If you guys enjoyed this episode, I would love it if you can give me a like. And if you're watching on the VOD, feel free to give me a comment, even if it's a little bit of a, you know, thumbs up, happy face. Appreciate the hell out of you guys that do that. And uh, that's going to be it. Mr. Buffalo Space, new type and divine hypno toad. Appreciate you guys coming in the chat. And everybody else has been a silent viewer. Enjoy the rest of your week because today is Friday. Yay. And I will see you 